the yeah, I got link. An Julie, I got an email. So they must all got one. Yeah, sounds <laughs> like it. I think we are live. I like Carl. Yes. <laughs> we are live. Okay, I'd like to call the utilities meeting to order. Uh, we have present Mike Richard, Dr. Fellner, and myself. Uh, have you guys read the minutes of the previous meeting? Yes. Can I have approval of those minutes, please? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. And I will second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, do we have any amendments to the agenda tonight? Okay, could I have approval of the agenda as amended or published? I'll make a motion to uh, <clears throat> approve the agenda as posted. And I will second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, tonight we're going to be talking about a mini cat purchase. Uh, who wants to take it, Mayor? I'll just uh, turn it over. I think this was deferred to explanation. I'll turn it over to Nikki. I, I'll just go back. This was deferred off of the last week's uh, agenda. I think it's 2078 or something like that, Julie. Is that right? Yes. Yes, it is. So that's that's really what we're talking about, and it involves the the um, uh, the purchase of an excavator. So beyond that, we'll just go ahead and um, I don't want to I don't want to um, walk all over Nikki on this, but I would say that everybody on the a call tonight, all three of the committee members voted for purchasing this excavator about not quite a year ago uh, because it was included in the 2020 uh, budget. So we'll just start off right there. And, you know, it's, this is, it was in the budget back a year ago. And uh, so I'll start with that. And hopefully that doesn't walk all over Nikki. Okay, I got a question first. Are you sure that was in there as an excavator or a dump truck? It was definitely an excavator, Mark. I pulled it up just to be sure, and it was in there. I think actually the line said mini. Just to make sure you can hear me. There's no problem with my audio tonight. Just Not to confirm. Here, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Ms. Ward. Okay, so this was, like Tom said, a planned purchase. Um, we did it, we used state purchasing and we did not have an ordinance authorizing us to make the purchase using state purchasing. So part of our process got missed and you know we need to get, I suppose, the request is retroactively um, approved the purchase through state purchasing. Okay, so you do have the mini excavator in possession. Yes. Okay. What, yeah, we what's the, the difference between the, uh, you know, I, I believe uh, Mr. Triplett has identified um, a, a similar piece of machinery. Uh, what's the difference between the one we have and the new one? Um, yes. That, okay, I made inquiries about that because I knew, you know, we did have a piece, we do have a mini. And the response I got across the board is yes, we have a mini, but they called it a wheelbarrow with a bucket. <laughs> that um, it's, it's so small, it's not really useful for the type of work um, that, that any of those groups do. Andy's group, this mini has the digging power of a backhoe, just, you know, on a smaller body. That, I don't, you know, I don't know 20 years ago when that mini at the line department was purchased. I don't know what the, what the plan was or what they intended to use it for. I really can't speak to that. But um, this is a about 20 year old piece of equipment with 650 hours. 
So the last 20 years, it's only been used 650 hours. And from everything that I understand, that is because it is, it's just not the right size, the right piece of equipment to do the work when they need it. So, uh, Nikki, uh, so yeah. the one that we're looking at is <clears throat> you already purchased it, and this is just to uh, kind of uh, do the correct process, so to speak. Yes, yep, we missed a step in the process. We, you know, we have the purchase order in place, it went through Board of Control, we went through our, our usual process, but the process where we send it over to Julie and say, hey, put in, could you please, you know, put on the committee agenda an ordinance to authorize the purchase through state purchasing, that that step did not happen. And so that's what I'm asked at this, at this point, that's the request that that ordinance be put out there to authorize that, and I guess, like I said earlier, retroactively. Kind of a then and now ordinance. <laughs> kind, yeah, kind of doc, yeah. Okay. But it's I not now, though. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. I was going to say it's not a then and now. This is, a, I think, real similar to the uh, Buckeye Russ fire truck uh, that that we bought. Real similar thing happened. That we uh, went through the board of control process. We ordered it through state purchasing, and in that case, the, a combination of the the fire department and our office. Uh, <clears throat> didn't get council approval for that. I think that's the important key here is spending the 76,000 without getting council approval. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I don't know if I would. I would disagree with that. Uh, I would, you know, I would say this is the second time in seven or eight years that this has happened. And it's as, just as inadvertent of a mistake or just as much a mistake as it was when the fire department and the fire truck was uh, ordered in the same way. So. And we have Eunice or Julie, correct me if I'm wrong. We, we have an ordinance that authorizes us to use state purchasing. We just don't have an ordinance specific to purchasing. We don't have a current one. Okay. I, don't have one we, I know our I know our membership is current, but that's yeah, I don't the last one I was looking that up. The last one I think was in 18 that we authorized to join that. Okay. Oh our membership, you know, that that's all current and it's we just don't have the ordinance specific to the piece of equipment. My may I ask question, Mark? Yes. Starting to, this is going to take us way off utilities, but were the the uh, police cruisers those leases were they state purchase price or? Yes. Yeah. So I don't know, Julie, when that if if it was renewed after that, but we we used that, <laughs> that process to lease these the the current newest fleet of cruisers. So anyway, well uh, to to Mark's point, I believe is. Uh, you know, I, I don't believe anything um, was untoward um, or deceptive. Um, I think uh, without using COVID as an excuse for everything, been a tough year. Um, it was an oversight. Um, uh, I, I think, you know, the, the issue that I had was like, wow, is this a good time to make that purchase? Uh, you know, with everything else going on, it just seems like it was, uh, you know, it was, we pulled the trigger kind of fast. However, I get it that we don't know what um, 2021 is going to bring. Um, we haven't set the budget. I think if the funds um, are there based on the budget for 2020, you know, uh, while the timing uh, in my mind isn't the greatest, I don't believe, uh, I, I believe this is a forgivable offense. Um, and uh, I, you know, we'll just uh, 
slap the appropriate wrists and uh, get on with it because uh, we've got work to do and, and 2021 is going to be a firestorm just like 2020 was. Yes, Eunice. I, I just also um, feel that it's worth mentioning that we were also paying for the rental of another excavator as well. I don't have the figures in front of me as to how much we were spending to rent one of these as well to be able to get projects and work done. But I just think that that's important to note as well. So that the current the, the current excavator was inadequate to the job? Correct. Yeah, I think it was about eight grand. You yes, I think, a, I think that's about right, Tom, yes. So that's, that was what I was going to, I think it was eight grand, right, Nikki, that we had in. Somewhere in that neighborhood, yes. And of course, as um, sales guys are keen to do, we also, they we had a one month loaner at no cost with the hope that, you know, we would demo their, their equipment and we would buy their equipment. So not only did we rent one several times, we had a long-term loaner. So, you know, it was something that it was that was the right piece of equipment to get several jobs done and we didn't have it and so we rented it you know we've done that with a bulldozer and you know but we use a bulldozer a couple times a year so that's a you know a totally different situation but so, yes so i i think the number was around eight thousand bucks well i still go back to what like what doc says okay you slap somebody's wrist and move on but just like item B on our agenda tonight, it was done the same way without council approval. What's that? What's item B? Uh, the charge point lease. Yeah, that was. <laughs> so how many times in a $20 million business do we do this? I don't even know if I want to answer. I would say that there was the Russ Hinkle fire truck. I think anybody who's used that truck or been, you know, would say that was probably a good investment. And, and, and I would point to this, the charge point, I could tell you the, the, that should have been deferred at the beginning, but I was not paying as close of attention. So when we get done with this one, there's really not much to say other than nothing's gonna move ahead, but let's finish this one and we can talk about the other one. But I think overall what I'm saying is it doesn't happen that often and I'm sorry, it, it uh, seems like it does, but you know, I don't know what else to add to that. And as I said, I you know, I'm I'm mad at myself for this. You know, it's a it's a stupid rookie mistake. You know, I, at I guess the bottom line is at least Rod caught it and we can fix it. You know, I'm I'm glad he caught it. It went you know past several desks and he was the guy who actually ended up catching it and gives us an opportunity to fix it. And, you know, Dr. Fellner, to your point about, you know, is this the right time to buy it, you know, given everything that's going on? That's kind of why the purchase was late in the year, because we were watching revenue to make sure money was coming in. But at the same time, there was a dump truck and a couple of other things that we had budgeted for that we have nixed for those reasons. Right. Um, if there aren't any other questions or comments, I'd like to make a motion to uh, move ordinance 2020-78 on the full council. Second that, Mark. Okay, all in favor? Aye. I'll say no. Okay, that goes on to full council, I guess, with two thirds vote. Item B is a charge point lease. So I guess whoever. I just say quickly that there are two uh, in getting this ready to even be discussed. There are two uh, missing links, if you will, or pieces to the puzzle. Uh, they involve a, the agreement that we're, we'll need with the property owner to install uh, on a le th this leased equipment on that site. So we need to have that. And then we also need the other missing link or missing piece is uh, a final calculation on at what rate, probably between 25 cents and 30 cents. And at, at that rate per minute, 
how many hours a year are we going to, or a day, however you want to break it down, uh, uh, need to have that charger active to cover the costs. We're just not quite there yet, Mark, on either one of those. So there was a request and we'll, we'll follow up on it, on uh, getting that uh, potential agreement with the property owner out there. And then as far as setting the, the, the fee or the rate, uh, that this, that's probably something that you won't see. Uh, we won't be talking about that until next year. So it'll be a couple more weeks before we're back trying to, to lay out how much per minute and then at that rate, how many hours a year will we need? So. Okay, so we don't need any action on this one. No, I wouldn't, I would, I would defer, I should have deferred it from the agenda, but didn't, but at least that covers it. Unless somebody has a question or wants well, to. With, with that being said in the, the deferral, could you elaborate on um, the, uh, the issue? Yeah, the, what, what it is, is the, the proposal is a three-year lease uh, with a, a company that provides the rapid chargers for electric cars. Okay. The, that's the proposal. The idea is to locate it as close to uh, US 30 as possible. So, oh gosh, I, maybe a year ago, folks, we, we started some initial conversation the owner of the Valero has some property. Our electric infrastructure is literally above where we're gonna uh, we're we're gonna propose to put a pad and a transformer in this station. So, I'd heard some rattling around about you know why Valero, why not some other places. Well, the answer to that question, if that's people are wondering, is it's right there. Uh, and they were uh, interested in our infrastructure was right there. So that's kind of how we, uh, how, how the project evolved. Um, and this might be something that will barely cover costs in the first year or so, but uh, even from someone who likes fossil fuel fired electricity, I can see electric cars moving forward and i think it makes sense for us to look at uh you know we've got the electric infrastructure um we could at least have a portal to people driving by the you know our exit on 30 and uh you know maybe become a, a destination station but doc i hope that doesn't over detail no that that's fine um does does mansfield or b cyrus have one of these yeah, there are a couple there is there is one in Bucyrus that is located right at the square, uh, kind of real close to the mural in, in downtown. And then yeah, there are a couple in Mansfield. They are, um, um, I, I'm run, working from memory on this doc. I think Walmart has a large one in the Ontario Walmart location. I know Walmart has one, and I believe there is another one in Shelby, but that I, I and that is at a Valero station also. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's it. So I think as long as it covers cost, the reason it came up to council is that at three years, the total lease amount will be over fifty thousand bucks, and what we just went through with the the last discussion. Uh, people in our office were, you know, very tuned into the fact that we don't want to um, run this around council in any way. We want to bring it to council. And in that process, realize there's a couple, as I said a minute ago, missing links. So I hope that that covers that. And it could have been deferred, but now you know a little more. Good. Okay, so any other questions on it, A or B? My only question, Tom, would be, how are we gonna get this straightened out where these large purchases come before council first, before we buy the item? Yeah, I don't, uh, the, I think you got it straightened out. I think, 
uh, service director heard. She took her um, correction from council. I'd hate to count up how many times, I don't know what a large purchase is, but um, I'd hate to, to count how many have been done and how few have been objectionable. So we're not perfect, but the thing that irks me a little bit is the suggestion that this is a, some sort of pattern. Uh, I, I just don't buy that. So this, this issue is on the agenda tonight to make sure that that argument that perception doesn't have any basis and there's a way i can you know i don't want to try to get around doing this there's a way to get around going to council that's not our intent so and i i just want to note too that this we have several steps in place to try and make sure that there's the checks and balances i was not aware that it needed to go to council when it was state purchasing so we are aware of that now. It, this is the first one where I have been here that this has happened. Um, I know Nikki's really taken the brunt of this, but like I said, there's several steps and procedures where this was approved, not just by her, but like she also said, Rod caught it. So, you know, we're grateful for that and we can correct it and move on. And we've all gained some knowledge from it, including myself. So. Hopefully it won't happen again, but we're all human and we all make mistakes. I don't, I don't think for a second that it is a, um, a pattern that I have seen in all the years. I think that um, uh, Eunice, you're absolutely right. Uh, the, there's various levels that it uh, slipped through and God knows you have been um, you know, concerned with COVID dollars and that, and, you know, so the extra burden of, of this year, I don't for one minute feel like uh, this is a problem that needs um, yet another layer of um, accountability. I, I think that, um, I think that we're going to be fine. And I am extremely proud of the staff up at the city building. Hey, thanks, Doc. I would just say one, one more thing, not to belabor this, Mark, but the, the, um, the time for counsel, the best time for counsel to weigh in on these subjects is over the next couple of weeks when you see the first draft of the budget. Right. And the temptation after, let's say, an hour and 20 minute meeting is not to ask a question about some capital investment, some capital uh, item in the sewer budget, for instance. Like th that's the, the, go ahead and ask the question because there, you'll, we'll see things in the 2021 budget that probably, um, which, you know, questions should be asked about. So it's, it's not that like there isn't scrutiny before it gets to council, but Really, that's the time if you think there is something in there. There's also been the discussion, it hasn't come up tonight, but surrounding this, that, the, that there was, has been a request in that same budget uh, to replace a, a bucket truck. Okay, that's in there again for 2021. Uh, that's, um, now's the time to make sure that council wants to go ahead and uh, replace a bucket truck. So that being just another example of um, capital stuff. I, I hate to, to, to like get too far off on this, Mark, but um, street sweeper, isn't there a request for a street sweeper this year? Nikki? I think that's I, three or four years down the road, Tom, oh, okay. that five-year plan. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm not real wild about buying it. So I'll just leave it there. I'm, I, I'm sorry people are disappointed, but I don't think it's a regular pattern. Okay, let's move on to item C, water rate update. I mean, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, Nikki, I think it is either working on or has drafted the change that needs to be put in place uh, that basically the shortest version of the story is back in 2014 we reduced water rates 
by 20 percent. It in um, January of 2020, those water rates will go back up to that 2014 level. That's the simplest way to put it. And um, that will, uh, will reduce our operating loss in the water fund by 50%, a little more than 50%. <clears throat> so uh, we'll still see erosion of the balance, but it won't be at the rate that it has been. Uh, you apply that a second year, you begin to see that uh, water fund balance uh, reach kind of a low water mark and then work its way back up. So that's the how much the shortest version. Is that, Tom? Pardon me? How much of an increase is that? Uh, it's it um, you, depends on how you want to cut about and Nikki may have this at five um, units just different ways to measure it at five units it is how much Nikki and then at 10 units I think it's eleven dollars at 10 units hang on here getting my calculator out. Just give me a sec here. And while, she, while she's uh, it, while working. Uh, go ahead, Doc. I'm sorry. Well, I talked over you. Sorry. While Nikki's working on, on that, um, this information is for our information and courtesy. It doesn't require council action, correct? No, it doesn't. Okay. It in the budget will the budget you see hopefully at the end of this week or over the weekend will reflect revenue in 601 the water fund but there but we're, the budget you'll see for 603 will reflect uh, just f no increase okay so you'll be able to see what that what what happens with the sewer fund fund balance for the end of 2021 if no adjustments made. Okay. Did you get that? I think it's a dollar nineteen a unit. So at five units, it's uh, six dollars a month. I just did the math, Tom. So, like you said, for a five-unit household, it'll be eight dollars and sixty cents a month. Total bill or total increase? Total increase. Sorry. And then so <coughs> at eleven. Like the family with teenagers, it'll be 11 bucks a month, roughly. I think the best way to look at this is it brings the rates back uh, to where they were in 2014. So you, there's, um, so anyways. Will this go into effect one January? Yeah. Okay. Nick, go ahead. Yep, it'll, it'll go into effect Jan, um, January, but I believe the way the billing cycles work out, it won't appear on bills until February because that will be for January usage. Okay. If you just, if you, when you look at the, at the water fund budget without, with flat revenue, static revenue, uh, at the end of 2021, we will be at or below the three month operating reserve that I think is prudent. And I think I know was a condition of our getting out of fiscal emergency. You had to maintain that. So whether or not we've been able to um, go without raising rates longer than we thought when first released from fiscal emergency, we're getting to the point that if we don't do something there, we're going to be inside of 90 days of cash reserve. That's it's it's kind of a required standard. It's also probably uh, as low as we would want to uh, erode that balance. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? No, sir. No, oh, sir. Okay, do we have any other business? Okay, next meeting will be January 6th at 7 p.m. 
Do I have a motion to adjourn? Yes, you do. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned at 7.30. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Everyone, good night. Good night.